what all of this is saying to you is that changing up your training is absolutely vital. Change equals adaptation. And Christian Thibodeau, who focused on Olympic lifting, explosive fast movements, by then having a meso cycle of, of controlled repetitions, volume training, time under tension, repeated contractions, he was able to build significant muscle because he changed the stimulus and his training methods supplemented each other. He worked on multiple muscle fibers. So this video is about muscle fibers and how you can train them. And muscle fibers for me are the most interesting aspect of training and physiology. And I need to start by saying that this video is a communication of ideas. In no way will it even scratch the surface of the incredible work that people like Dr. Galpin are doing and strength and conditioning coaches who dedicate their careers to training their athletes and working on muscle fibers as part of their programs. And so within a muscle, we have many motor units. A motor unit is a motor neuron and the muscle muscle fibers that it innovates, that it activates. And within a motor unit, all the muscle fibers will be of the same type. However, within a muscle, there will be several motor units and therefore you will have different muscle fiber types in every single muscle in your body. So every muscle in your body will have a different ratio of type one to type two fibers. And when a motor unit is activated, all of the muscle fibers within that motor unit will, will be activated. They will all be online as part of the movement. So essentially we have two types of muscle fiber, although we have hybrids that I will get onto later. And so type one fibers are these endurance fibers. They are more fatigue resistant than other fibers. They are the muscle fibers which are used for prolonged activities. And then we have type two fibers. Type two fibers are separated into two different categories. We have type two A fibers. Now these are more powerful, more explosive fibers than type one. They're, they're activated by the more powerful uh, activities that we place upon them, but they are still oxidative in nature. So this will give you, so these fibers will work over a fairly extended period of time with, with high intensity. But then we have the type 2X fibers, and these are the ultra fast fibers, the most explosive fibers responsible for those powerful movements. And these are glycolytic in nature. And so they will, they will work and be powerful for a very short period of time, but they get tired very easily. And so we have a continuum of muscle fibers, and it's very important to think of muscle fibers as a continuum from type 1, the more endurance based fibers, which uh, are resistant to fatigue and if you like last longer all the way through the type 2a to the type 2x the most explosive uh, muscle fibers and the reason that you need to think of it as a continuum is because we also have hybrid muscle fibers hybrid fibers are a mixture of type 1 and type 2 and essentially you can think of them as transitioning from one muscle fiber to another muscle fiber type and so one of your questions may be can I change my muscle fibers from a from a type 1 to a type 2? And the scientific response is definitively, yes, you can. Dr. Andy Galpin says that it's undeniable that the muscle fibers change. And he references the work of Anderson 1994. We know that we can change hybrids. However, it is worth noting that the, the process of changing a hybrid to a type 2 fiber is, is much more prevalent than changing a hybrid to a type 1 fiber. And most definitely, we do not know how much of a change you can make. We do not know how significant that change is. We don't know what exercise protocol specifically will initiate certain changes. That is not known in the current state of research. And much of the confusion around this comes from the fact that within the history of scientific exploration of muscle fibers, the tools used for measurement were nowhere near as accurate as they are now. And interestingly enough, for sedentary people who do not train, who do not have structured training, they will, they will develop a larger amount of hybrid fibers because they are not training their muscle for any specific function. There is no specificity to the stimulation that they are putting on their body. 
If we know that type 2 fibers are associated with power activities, then the more we train power activities, the more we're stimulating these type 2 fibers and vice versa with the type 1 fibers. Now, if you do nothing, you're not stimulating either end of the spectrum and actually you're going to have a greater number of hybrid fibers. No muscle within your body will be 100% fast twitch or slow twitch. Every single muscle within your body will have a mixture of the two, but you will be more dominant in one than the other. Now this is very inherent in genetic, and so some of us are born more powerful, and some of us are born more endurance-based. Some of us have a higher dominance of type two fibers. We are better at more powerful activities. You're sprinting, power punching. I'm one of those people. And some of us are inherently more type one dominant, and they, they, they will be better endurance type activities, long distance running, volume punching, etc. And so very quickly, you may identify whether, generally speaking, you are more type 1 or type 2 dominant. Also, it's important to state that type 2 fibers have the greatest potential for growth, for hypertrophy. And Dr. Galpin explains this by stating that they induce hypertrophy due to the higher concentration of them, the fact they're more sensitive, and also the nature of fast twitch muscle fibers, which are there essentially to increase in size. And, and essentially, none of us are going to get officially tested. It's a rare, expensive, and maybe painful process. It's not it's just not realistic. And one way that you can try and uh, test your muscle fiber ratios and dominance is the 80% test, where you are essentially putting 80% of a one rep max for a certain exercise on the bar and then you're performing as many reps as you can. I think you will be able to understand where you fit into the spectrum and this will translate into the gym. But having said that, some muscles within your body will naturally, let's say, be more dominant in one muscle fiber type than another because of their function in the body. The larger muscle groups that are used for more powerful movements, such as the hamstrings for sprinting, will have a higher percentage of, of type two fibers within your body than, for example, the soleus uh, uh, within your leg, because that, that which is used for more endurance-based activities. But your body as a whole will be different to my body in terms of, uh, am I more powerful or more endurance-based than you?